Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. This is Auto Line Daily for Monday, May 10th, 2010, and now the news. Ford announced that it will build its first hybrids for the European market at its assembly plant in Valencia, Spain. It's going to make hybrid and plug-in hybrid versions of the five-seat C-Max starting in 2013. The company is also going to export the seven-passenger version called the Grand C-Max to the U.S. market late next year. But Ford could be running into problems with its hybrids. Bloomberg reports that an American company called Pace, which holds some of the basic patents on hybrids, is suing Ford for using that technology without its permission. Pace successfully sued Toyota over patent infringement and is currently seeking to prevent Toyota from importing hybrids into the American market. Ever since U.S. automakers got rid of their legacy costs last year, they're not relying on beating up their suppliers to cut costs, or at least not as much as they did before. As a result, suppliers say that doing business with the Detroit 3 is a lot better than it used to be. In fact, the latest survey by Planning Perspectives shows that suppliers all reported significant improvements in how they rate Ford, GM, and Chrysler at the same time they reported that relations with Toyota, Honda, and Nissan are going down. Automakers with the best supplier relations tend to produce the highest quality at the lowest cost. Chrysler is putting its money where its mouth is. According to the Wall Street Journal, the company plans to reward about three quarters of its stores with financial payouts of as much as $200,000. The scheme is part of a new program geared towards improving customer satisfaction. Nearly 1,800 dealerships will receive a bonus based on evaluations of their operations by Chrysler and three outside companies that used secret shoppers to rate how well the dealers treated them. Hey, could Hyundai be working on a full-size truck for the American market? We found this story on Autoblog, courtesy of PickupTrucks.com, which says the South Korean automaker held research clinics with potential buyers in California and Texas to gauge their interest. The company used a modified Dodge Ram 1500 with a custom Hyundai grille and interior enhancements for the trials. This does not necessarily mean the two companies would partner on a pickup, but it's interesting nonetheless since Nissan dropped out of a deal with Chrysler to build its next generation Titan pickup off the Ram. Despite all the troubles Toyota recently went through, it was still able to sell vehicles thanks to pouring on the incentives but analysts predict as those fade out, the automaker could face a tough time selling cars again. According to the AP, even though Toyota has extended its incentives through the end of May, they are not as effective. Sales dropped 16% from March to April, and Edmunds.com says fewer people are considering buying a Toyota now than before all its troubles began. A camouflaged BMW X3 prototype caused a bomb scare in New York City over the weekend. According to the New York Daily News, the head of product planning for BMW North America, Martin Berkman, parked the car in front of a museum and accidentally left the vehicle running while he went to spend time in Central Park. A woman noticed that the car was running and thought the camouflaged vehicle looked suspicious enough to call police due to last weekend's attempted car bombing in the city. The police learned the vehicle did not pose a problem after shutting down the area and even smashing out a window to see if there was a bomb inside. The E-Class Mercedes racks up a lot of profits for the company, and the E-Class Cabriolet is an important source of those profits, and we'll be looking at the brand new one right after this. Introducing Bridgestone's third generation of run-flat tires with groundbreaking new Bridgestone technologies. Bridgestone Run Flat Tires offer improved ride comfort, lower rolling resistance, and improved wear while giving you the peace of mind and comfort you need. Open air motoring has a long history that dates back to the earliest days of the automobile. Keeping that tradition alive, Mercedes-Benz just introduced its brand new E-Class Cabriolet. Autoline Daily correspondent Isaac Bouchard reports on this luxurious drop top. Since its hardtop sibling debuted last year, there have been persistent rumors that it's not really an E at all, as some of its components and structure come from the smaller and less expensive C-Class. Let's take a look. 
It sure looks like an E-Class though. It's got the twinned headlamps and the chamfered, wedgy good looks of the classic W124 series of the mid 80s and 90s. Those pontoon rear fenders may be a bit much though. Here's what really matters, especially in a ragtop, the cockpit. The linear forms suggest a timeless style as opposed to a fashion statement, and the quality of materials do nothing to undermine the sense of class. Everything feels expensive and built to last. It's also got a usable back seat, unlike many competitors, and Mercedes patented air cap system. Well, the air cap system allows us to actually raise the air level above the cabin, thus reducing both the noise level and the turbulence significantly on the inside of the vehicle. The best part about this, and really our point with, this, with, uh, with the Cabriolet, is to extend the driving season, thus making it a much more comfortable car in all four seasons. I'm glad Mercedes decided to stick with the fabric roof. It lets the world know you're driving a convertible even with the top up. It's lighter, and it consumes a lot less trunk space. The drive is likewise solid and deliberate, hewn from solid body structure, even with the top down and none of the low speed bumpiness of competitors. Decent steering feel, at least for a Benz, good turn in and excellent body control are also present along with strong linear brakes. The optional adjustable suspensions two settings are very well thought out, neither creates a choppy, harsh ride. In these regards, the Benz seems to combine the best of the C and E classes. There are two engines to choose from, a more than adequate 3.5 liter V6 with 268 horsepower. Hooked up to a slick seven speed automatic, it's probably all you need, but it's a bit harsh at the top of the rev range and its exhaust note is uninspiring. The cure for that is this, a 5.5 liter V8 with 382 horses and 391 pound feet of the twisty stuff and an exhaust note to die for. With either engine, the Mercedes gives a sense of occasion. It makes you feel pampered and as if you're someone really special. I really don't care what bits are under the skin, as long as they combine to create that. The 2010 Cabriolet is a worthy inheritor of the E-Class name. I'm Isaac Bouchard for AutoLine Daily. Thanks for that, Isaac. Those are some nice looking cars, provided you can afford them. Starting price for the drop top E350 is about $57,000, while the V8 powered one opens up at nearly 65 grand. Don't forget to tune in tonight for Open Line, our newest program that lets you participate in the conversation. Hosted by Michelle Naranjo, Miss Motormouth, the action gets going at 8 p.m. tonight. Check it out at our website at autolinedetroit.tv for the most engaging talk about cars that lets you take part in it all. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching, we'll see you tomorrow.